Good morning and welcome to Christ United Methodist Church. My name is Jody and I'm the Director of Worship Arts. We know that you have options for your online worship and we are very happy to have you worshiping with us this morning. Christ Church has a mission of gather, grow, and go. We gather together as the body of Christ, both in person and virtually. We grow as we move from believer to follower and we go make a gospel impact in and beyond the local church. This time, I invite you to light a candle, if you have one available at home, representing the light of Christ present with us as we worship. And now please join me in praying the breakthrough prayer printed on the screen. Please pray with me. God of hopes and dreams and visions for the future, we ask you to send the Holy Spirit to break through into our lives and into your church. Help us sense where your spirit is leading. Give us faith and courage to step through the doors that you open. Amen. Our opening song reminds us that as Christians, we are called to love our neighbors and to treat one another with kindness and mercy. Please join Mike as we sing. The words will be on the screen. Where charity and love prevail, there God is ever found. Brought here together by Christ's love, by love are we thus bound. Forgive we now each other's faults as we our faults confess. And let us love each other well. Christian holiness. Let strife among us be unknown, let all contention cease. Be Christ the glory that we seek, be ours his holy peace. Love can exclude no race or creed if honored be God's name. Our common life embraces all whose maker is the same. Hello, my name is Jane Easley. I'm one of the pastors here at Christ United Methodist Church. I would invite you to join with me in the call to worship. I'll read the plain text, and I invite you to join along in the bold-faced text. Oh, let us strengthen our commitment to Christ today. May we become the witnesses of Christ. Let us do good in the world for his name's sake, for he is the way and the perfection of life itself. The peace of the Lord be with you and with all who gather here. I would invite you to reach out and uh, offer peace to any who might be with you in your home. If you're worshiping alone, I would encourage you to offer peace to someone else uh, who might be needing just that word later on today. Thank you. I have a few announcements to share with you. This year, the Rockford area crop hunger walk will be a virtual one. We will not be walking together because of the COVID pandemic, but instead I want to encourage you to be a virtual walker and raise money for projects to help the hungry in our community and around the world. You can go online and Google Rockford Crop Walk and join the Christ UMC Harvesters team. Then fundraise online and join the fun. Every virtual walker will receive a t-shirt. If you can't walk, please consider supporting an online walker or mail a check to the church and put Crop Walk on the memo line or you may give via Tithely. Your support helps to provide meals for the hungry in our community and provide more food security around the world. Thank you for your generosity and support. This month, we will have one more opportunity for you to attend an outdoor in-person worship service. It will be on September 27th at 10 a.m. at our Master's Center, and this service will include communion. The service has space for up to 50 people and is open to anyone, regardless of which center you usually attended. Registration must be made in advance, and the deadline is Friday, September 25th at noon. Since the service is outdoors, I encourage you to please dress appropriately. In case of rain, the service will be canceled and there will be no rain date. If we need to cancel, we will post it on our website and on the church's Facebook page. 
Please register by contacting Linda at the church at the phone number and email address below. She will provide further instructions at the time of registration. And lastly, Natalie is still looking for some people who enjoy working outside to help maintain the gardens around the church property and also to help with the fall cleanup. If you'd be willing to help, please call or email the church at the contact information below. Leave a message and she will get back to you. If you'd like to follow along with the scripture read later in the service, today's scripture will be Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 40 from the New Revised Standard Version. And now it's time for this week's segment of What You've Been Up To. are doing great so I know that the many of you already started a new school year last week or this week so some of you study remotely learning in your place and some of you go to school in person so you might be learning all sort of the new rules at school or through remote learning right so for example for remote students, you cannot access other websites during your class time. For in-person students, you cannot take your mask off in the building or you cannot uh, touch your friends or others. So whether you are at school or home, there must be a lot of new rules during this pandemic. So I think all these rules are for your safety and new learning you know that they are good for all of you, right? So the rules help us to follow a correct guidelines and guidance. So, but do you know which one of the, all these new rules is the most important? Hmm. Very hard, isn't it? The people in Jesus' day had to follow rules too. So there were the Ten Commandments that Moses wrote on the tablet of stone, but the Jewish actually had 613 laws. So there are 248 do's and 365 don'ts. Wow! That is a lot of do's and don'ts, isn't it? But can you imagine trying to remember all of them? 613 laws. Wow. In the Bible, one day, a lawyer asked Jesus, which is the greatest commandment from 613 laws? So Jesus answered him saying, two things. First, love your God. And the second is love your neighbors as yourself. So on these two commandments hang all the laws. In other words, Jesus was saying that if we could keep these two commandments, we could not have any trouble keeping the others. So today, I have two big rocks here and small rocks. So can you imagine if I put all the rocks in the jar together? Hmm, no. We can't put them in the jar together. They will not fit. 
So, but when we put the two big rocks in the jar first, all the rocks can fit in this jar. But in the same way, the two big rocks represents the two great commandments that we learned today, which are love God and love neighbors, love people. So when we follow these two great commandments first in our lives, all the other rules in the Bible become each to keep. So let's do this right now. Love God. The love people. Then Here we go! Yay! Remember to love God and love others as yourself in your life. It helps us to live in this world as a Christian who follow the way God wants us to live. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for teaching us that it is important to follow your way. Help us to love you with all of our hearts and to love our friends and others as we love ourselves. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Take care, kids. Pastor D. Mead, one of the associate pastors here at Christ UMC. And my scripture reading today comes from Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. 
Dear God, may the words of the, my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today is Confirmation Sunday. For those that are worshiping in person, you'll get to see Confirmation next week um, on our recorded service. I was asked to come up with a scripture that would be appropriate for Confirmation. And I saw all the, the Holy Spirit scriptures and stuff, and I thought, those are nice. But there's one scripture, there's one scripture that if my confirmands think of nothing else, if they remember nothing else through all of this year that I taught them, all of the years of Sunday school, all of the years of church, if they remember nothing else, I want them to remember the greatest commandment. Love the Lord God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Why? Because Jesus thought that that was the most important thing. He had taught people for three years. He had taught them all these amazing things. He had taught them how to love. He had taught them how to give. He had taught them how to sacrifice. And when it came down to it, when a lawyer came to him and thought, okay, I'm going to trip him up. Out of all the things that he's been teaching, out of all of the scriptures, out of all the laws, and now you need to know that in the Hebrew scriptures, there's over 600 laws that a good Jew at that time needed to know, over 600. Some were for cleanliness, others were for diet, some were for religious laws. There's all kinds of laws that needed to be followed to be a good, pure Jew. Out of all of those laws, he wanted to know what, what was the best, what was the greatest commandment, what was the one that God wanted everybody to know the most. And so he said, love the Lord your God. And not just love the Lord your God, and you notice he didn't say fear God. We say that a lot in church. We say fear God. And when we say fear God, what we're actually saying is respect. Respect God. Respect God to a point that you're kind of trembling. Respect God to that point where whoever it is in your life that you really wanted to meet, that you would be so excited to meet them that you're kind of meeting them with fear and trembling because you're in awe. That's what fear the Lord means. It doesn't mean that you're terrified of them. It means that you're so excited, you're so in awe of them, that you're, you're trembling to be in front of them. That's what fear of the Lord means. But you notice, Jesus doesn't say that. Jesus doesn't say fear of the Lord. He says, love the Lord your God. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind very specifically, because he knows that those are different things. Loving the Lord your God with all of your heart means all of your passions. Where is your passion in your life? Do you, do you want to good, do good deeds, or do you want to raise funds? Do you want to become a builder, or a baker, or a candlestick maker? What do you want to do with your life? Whatever it is, you go on a Make sure that God is part of that passion. You want God to be part of whatever it is in your life that you love so much. Make sure you understand that, that gift you're going to give to the world, you understand that that gift came from God first. Because all of our gifts come from God first. So you understand whatever that passion is in your heart is a gift from God. And you give God Thanks for that gift. And it doesn't matter what that gift is, but you make sure that God is thanked for that gift and whatever you're doing in life that is your passion, you do it because God gave you that passion. And so you go into it as if it's a ministry from God. And that means if you are a UPS driver, you are the best UPS driver there is. Now, I've been watching a lot of news, like a lot of us have been, because we're at home. 
And I love the feel-good stories. And I was watching a feel-good story about this UPS driver that during this COVID time has been giving a little bit extra. When he drops off his packages, he makes sure that he has a couple of good sentences to give to those that he meets on his routes. And like a lot of people, the people on his routes have been ordering a lot of stuff at home. So he's gotten to know the people in his community. And he's gotten to know how they're doing and if they've been sick and if they've been stressed out that day. And each time he meets them, he makes sure that he takes a little bit of time with them. He's not one of those UPS drivers that rings your doorbell and runs back to their truck before you can even open your door. He spends the time to say hi. And for a lot of the people on his route, he was literally the only human contact they might have had that day that wasn't their family. And so his community actually got together and celebrated him. The community that he tied together by his presence got together and celebrated him because he showed love. He showed that he loved his neighbor by doing what he's passionate about in a way that went above and beyond what he had to do. And that is being a good human being, doing his job. And that's what Jesus was telling the lawyer. Love the Lord God with all of your heart and love your neighbors. And it doesn't matter what you're doing. What about the story about the garbage men? The story about the garbage men that did the same thing as the UPS guy. Again, the only person these people saw day in and day out got to know the people in his community, and the community <laughs> said thank you by getting together and just showing some signs and showing some support of saying thank you for taking time out and showing an interest in us loving your neighbor, doing what you're doing with a passion. That's what Jesus was talking about. Now, what does it mean to love God with all of our soul? Isn't that what we do? Our soul is God's. But so many times we just think of it as a, if we're in crisis, we remember to pray. Or if we really need something, we remember to pray. You know, when you're in high school and that test that you forget about and five seconds before the test, you're like, dear God, please, I will give you anything as long as you let me pass this test. Not that I ever did that, maybe in high school, graduate school, every school that I went to. I mean, God's good for it. But we have to remember that God is more than something that we pray to when we're in trials and tribulations. God is there because God is part of us at all times. And God wants to be an active part of our life. You've got to give God your soul. You can't hold back. It's almost like so many of us give God the silent treatment. Now, I know that I hate the silent treatment. I'm horrible at giving the silent treatment, and I hate receiving the silent treatment. It makes me insane. Think about how God is. We are his creation. God created each one of us, and I love the creation story where God is knitting us together where he actually creates us from the, the clay and you see him forming us as a potter creates his creation. I love that story that he takes so much time and detail work that he cares so much. God loves us so much that he not only made us himself, each and every one of us, that he also made every 
person that we care about. And he made the world that we live on. And he made all the food that we need. And he made all of the things in our life that we care about. And he made everything around us. And he made his son, Jesus Christ, to save us. Think about that. But how many times in our world do we get so caught up in ourselves that we treat God like a partner that we're angry at and we give him the silent treatment where our soul's not reaching out to God, where when God reaches out to us, we're too busy listening to listen and we cut him off. That's why the greatest commandment that Jesus talks to us says, love God with all of your heart and love God with all of your soul. Continue to open up to God. Reach out to God. Hear God. Talk to God. Speak to God. You don't have to always do it verbally, unless you're me. I have to talk verbally to everybody. But you don't have to. Just open your soul. Keep it open. When you get those little nudges, and I'm telling you now, you're getting those nudges more than you think you do. When you get those nudges, pay attention to them. If you're like me and you have a prayer journal, write them down. If you just want to write them down on notes, write them down on your notes. Jot them in your phones. We all have phones. Write those notes down. Pay attention to them. But keep your heart open. If it's only open enough each morning to wake up and say, Thank you, God, I'm alive, do that. Acknowledge that God is in your heart every day. Thank you, God, for this morning. Thank you, God, for this evening. Bless my family. Acknowledge that you are God's own. Make sure you stay in love with God and that your soul is connected. Then love God with all of your mind. That means keep your mind sharp. Don't think that you stopped learning about God when you were in confirmation. You don't stop learning about God when you get confirmed. You don't graduate from God's school when you get confirmed. Confirmands, I believe, are very intelligent beings, but they have not learned everything there is to know about God. That is just the start of your discipleship road. From confirmation, you are to continue to learn. You've got ideas. You've got genius ideas. Continue to learn. Continue to read the Bible. Continue to watch films. Continue to partake partake in Zoom classes. Continue to be part of discussion groups. Continue to talk to other people. Continue to get ideas and challenge ideas and grow and learn. Continue to see what is out there and what challenges your ideas and how they make your faith grow and bloom and your ideas about God expand. God blessed us all with a mind to use. That is part of being one of God's creation is we have a mind to use. What is better than using it about than learning about God and learning about our faith and learning about our world and God and our faith all mixed together. We are God's own creation. Let us learn how that is, how we are to love ourselves, how we are to love our neighbors, how we are to love God. The greatest commandment, love God with all of our hearts, all of our soul, all of our minds. When you do that, if you truly love God with your heart, your soul, and your mind, then you can't do anything else 
but love your neighbor as yourself because your neighbor is a creation of God. And if you love God that much, you cannot possibly hurt God by hurting one of his neighbor, uh, one of his creations. So you have to love your neighbor. And then by learning about God, you'll learn how to love your neighbor more. So yes, the greatest commandment, if my confirmands learn nothing else, I hope they learn the greatest commandment and they take that with them and they hold it close to them on this, their first step in being an adult disciple in the United Methodist Church. Amen. Good morning. I'm Pastor TK. I'm one of the associates of pastor at Christ UMC. As we move into this time of the prayers, let us lift up our concern and joys of our community. We lift up prayers for the Tom Schulers who is in the hospital. We also pray for the Melvin Fussler, who is in, in the hospital as well. We lift up the joy for the Cliff Gillette as he finished his responsibility at the church as a director of the facilities and moves out of the state. So it has been a joy to have a Cliff on our staff, and we wish him all the best of everything and pray for him as he begins a new chapter in his life. Also, we celebrate Shane Zeros, who has taken over the responsibility of director of the facility at Christ UMC. Thanks be to God. We pray for the students Maya Austin, Joseph Carson, Deborah Ruth Hyung, and Spenna Lumberg, who are being confirmed today. Praise the Lord. We continue to pray for the administrators, teachers, college students, parents, and all the students as they go to school in person or by remote learning. We pray for the safety and health of all and ask for the God's blessing on the school year. We continue to pray for the different congregations in the Rockford District. Today, we pray for the Red Oak, UMC, and Pastor Gary Rich. Please join us in prayer. Lord, we come this day to worship and thank you for the many ways you guide our lives. We thank you for being with us and for your amazing grace and encouragement every day to move forward during this pandemic. So loving God, today we bring before you the names of the loved ones, both spoken and unspoken, who are struggling with many troubles and hardships so, and ask for your healing power so lord be with each of them and give them courage and strength and fill them with your love and grace that they may abide in you and be connected to your spirit lord pull out your peace on them and heal them with your amazing power and care Lord, we lift up our joys and celebrations that you have blessed our lives with today. Help us to remember who you are and be thankful to you always. We pray for these confirmants who are guided by the power of the Holy Spirit to confirm their faith before you. Help them to be faithful in you and lead them on the journey of faith. Fill them with your amazing grace and continue to be with them. We ask you to bless Cliff and Shane who are in transition of the new chapters and new position in life. We ask you to guide them to your plan. O oh Lord, we pray for those who are suffering from the COVID virus and also for those who work for them. We pray for those who are the victims of the fires in California. We also pray for those who are working against these disasters. Be with them and provide all the resources that they need. So, Lord, you are our master and shepherd. Lead us and guide us with your loving spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, as we pray the Lord's Prayer together, please stand as you are able and uh, hold hands if you can reach over to your loved one. But if you are alone, please... I invite you to hold my hands spiritually as we are united in spirit. 
Let us do the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So let us move the time of the offerings. During this time, we give our offerings back to God in gratitude for all God has done for us and continue to do in our lives because God has so richly blessed us. However, we know that some of you watching today are not members of the church. I encourage you to give to your home church first. But if you want to support our ministry, there are three options. First, you may send a check to the Christ UMC by mail. The address is 4509 High Crest Road, Rockford, Illinois 61107. The second option is to give your offering online. So you can access it directly, christumc.cc backslash give. Then you can follow each instruction to make your donation. The third option is you can give your offering using the smartphone app. So you can find the app Tithely, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y in the App Store or Google Play. And then once you download the app on your smartphone and put in the information, you can give your offerings easily. So whatever option you choose, we deeply appreciate your generosity and support. Thanks be to God. Spend time loving God with all of your heart, your mind, and your soul, but make sure you love your neighbor as yourself. Go in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.